May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So the text for the sermon today, I'm actually going to touch base on all three uh, readings from 1 Corinthians, from Isaiah, and from the Gospel of Mark, but I focus especially on the text from the Gospel of Mark. It seems like a very appropriate message as we begin this church year, and I guarantee you this is a text that every pastor at one time or another in his career from this pulpit has wanted to say, stay awake. So for our text, please be seated. You know, when I read that text, the thing that immediately came to my mind was Pastor Allward. I don't know how many, I know some of you have been here long enough to have seen Pastor Allward preach, but for those of you who hadn't, let me um, explain how this would work. He would, with his raspy, deep voice, lull you into a place of pondering and tranquility and peace, and then all of a sudden, and the mic was up here, so it wasn't here, he'd do this. He'd slam this pulpit and everyone's head would go like this. It was one of those moments you're hopeful that you were awake, but there have been plenty of times where I nodded and got caught by the, by the stay awake of Pastor Allward. So stay awake. Yes, I would love for you to stay awake during this sermon, please if you may, if you can, all you at home in your comfy chairs and such. But that isn't the message that Jesus is delivering today when he gives these words, these words to be ready, to stay awake. Let me remind you again, the reading in Mark, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. So we are then, if I read this right, to live in fear, in total anxiety, always being awake, never sleeping, always being on edge and on watch. Is that what Jesus is telling us? That's not what he's telling us. Although that might be an appropriate message for us today, living in this time of pandemic, when we are constantly concerned, we're constantly vigilant about this COVID virus. We're on guard. I can relate to this personally. Um, I've worn my mask. I've washed my hands. But then there was one day a few weeks ago at work when I suddenly got some chills and my nose started running and I had a cough that just came on. So I quickly got in the car, went home, took my temperature, temperature of 101.7. So I began to isolate myself in my home office, staying away from my family, and in the morning went to go get a test. Positive. So 10 days of isolation, We're, fears, how bad was it going to get? Would my family get this? Would I have to go to the hospital? Happily, I had a very mild case. It was just one bad day. But that is not what Jesus is speaking of when he says, be awake, be on guard for the coming of the Son of God. It is nothing like waiting to see if you're going to get COVID or not. There is no uncertainty with Christ. He will come again. That is the hope, the certain hope that we have. I hope that you don't get COVID, but some of you will. 
I can't say it with certainty. I can say with utmost certainty, Christ will come again. It's not an if, it's just a when. Well, then maybe this message that Jesus is giving us is like that anticipation we have, that hope we have when the holiday season comes about. Thanksgiving. Wonderful holiday. Giving thanks. We end our church year with it. That anticipation of being with all your family. But that's not how it was this year, was it? We wait in anticipation for these wonderful holidays, these holy days, but sometimes they don't meet our expectations. Is that the hope that we have? Is that what Christ is saying to us? No, not at all. The coming of the Lord will be nothing like a holiday that does not meet up to its expectations. It will live up to the hype. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, such sweet words, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, my beloved sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. No, the coming of Christ will not be like waiting for a pandemic to pass. It will not be like a holiday gathering that didn't fill all of our expectations. Rather, it will be exactly like the hymn that tells of that wonderful day. Joy to the world. It will be a day when heaven and nature sing. It will be heard as far as the curse is found. It will be repeating that sounding joy and we will be showered in wonders of his love. So when, when will that good and glorious day be? Because sometimes we get tired being in fear of a pandemic or living through holidays that don't live up to expectations. I can tell you with certainty the day is coming, but as our text tells us, no one knows the day, not the angels, nor the Son, only the Father. So when did Jesus speak these wonderful words of hope-filled anticipation? Was it just before he ascended and he knew the disciples were going to be worried about him and where did he go? That's not when he said these words. Did he say these words when he sent the disciples out to share the good news of the gospel for the first time? Nope. That's not when he said these words. So when did he say these words? These words from Mark 13 that end that chapter. Mark 14 begins with Christ before Pilate. He said these words, these encouraging words of hope and to be ready and to stay awake, be ready for the kingdom that is coming as he went to that cross for you and for me.
Therefore, people, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, when the rooster crowed, or in the morning, as it was for Christ when he went to that cross. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. When will Christ come? He has. He has already come. And he will come again. That's wonderful. one of the wonderful kingdom phrases. Now, but not yet. It's a kingdom truth that we live in these days. Has the kingdom come? Yes. It came when Christ said, It is finished on that cross. Yet, we still wait for him to come again and to restore this broken creation. And yet his kingdom also comes daily to you and through you as you shine the love of Christ or others shine that love to you. Yes, Christ will come with trumpet blast and all will know what is going on at that time. And yet, he still comes to you today in a quiet voice. He comes to you in the love shown by a neighbor who goes and gets you groceries when you can't leave your house. He will come, and we will celebrate a marriage feast that we have never participated in before when he the bridegroom and the church his bride celebrate this feast on that last day yet he comes to you weekly he will come to you in a few moments simply quietly mysteriously in the sacrament of his altar his kingdom comes And when we begin this new church year, this Advent season, the season of being on guard and being in anticipation for his coming, I don't want you to miss how Christ comes in his kingdom to you and through you. So stay awake. The words of Isaiah remind us The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle and in tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. It is our certain hope. So stay awake. In Christ's name, amen.